And Susan, uh, do you think that having just one day to tell people to quit smoking is enough? Oh, I well, is it enough? <laughs> <laughs> I think enough it would be to good to tell to everybody. You know, <laughs> but I think it's a really good start because I think one of the problems is that that again it comes down to I think that the basic thing is that people are fearful of the discomfort that they're going to experience and so if you have one day and they can prove to themselves that they can go one day then they can stretch it out right and do you think that one day is effective I think one day um well, well see I, I taught differently I my my program was eight weeks and it was uh, one day a week, with the exception of right after uh, qu the quitting day, and then they came back 48 hours later. But um, I think people need to look at their habit. So one day, yes, it might work for some people. Um, I, I was telling Susan before the show started, my ex-mother-in-law quit smoking with a hypnotist. And she went that one day, and, and she was very, very successful. But she went home with a little tape, though, and mm -hmm. she had to play her tape mm -hmm. every day, every day. And she, she was a heavy two-plus pack-a-day smoker, and she gave them up. So she was mentally ready to mm -hmm. give them up. I talked to some CSUN students and the community about their experiences with trying to quit smoking, and this is what they had to say. I tried Nicorette, I uh, got really sick. The problem with Nicorette and all those other things is they give you too much nicotine. So uh, you might feel a little sick, and if you don't quit effectively, you'll end up smoking more cigarettes, which I am now. <laughs> right now, at least I don't bring cigarettes with me to school so that I can smoke. Compared to if I have cigarettes with me, I smoke maybe four or five cigarettes in school. Now then I just cut down at least four or five in a day if I don't bring it to school. It was easy. I just kind of got sick of it. I don't know. I don't have like an addictive personality. I think that helped. I was just like, okay, I'm done with this. Kind of got old. I'll quit for today. I'll quit for this morning. And then I would go through that and say, if at the end of that period you still you want to have a smoke, you can make a new decision. And I would. And finally, it just extended to, what is it now, 35 years? Well, it was really easy. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand when people say that they get addicted to nicotine, or maybe I just don't have an addictive personality, because I was like, eh, no more. So to address some of the things brought up, Pamela, can the gums make people sick? It can. Yes, it can. Um, there are some things you can do if, if you don't, you know, you can take a half a piece of the gum. Um, most people make the mistake of thinking that you chew on this, where you, you're supposed to put it in your mouth and under your tongue and just kind of, you know, occasionally chew it, but not chomp on it. Um, you can also get addicted to the gum. I worked with an emergency room physician in upstate New York that quit smoking via the gum and got addicted to the nicotine in the gum. So there are, you know, all these other things, but y you have to kind of find your own niche. Um, it can go from, you know, any the patch you can use the patch you can use anything some people do well cold turkey so you know you just have to kind of find your niche okay and Susan is there such thing as an addictive personality oh absolutely there the brain the brain function brain structure has been found to be different in people who have addictive natures yeah. definitely Okay, and there's a lot of different kinds of anti-smoking campaigns that are making the difference. The Truth Campaign, for example, saved $1.9 billion or more in health care costs. So Samantha, since you're involved in so many types of events, I'm sure that you hear success stories. What have people expressed to you works best for them? Um, I've learned that just education, like educating a lot of the young people on campus has worked because it's really opened their minds up to the fact that smoking regular cigarettes or smoking light cigarettes doesn't make a difference or lower their risks of cancer and that hookah isn't any safer mm -hmm. and um, they've just really finding out that it's wrong in the first place has led them to make a change. Okay. And Pamela working in the medical field what do you think is the best way to quit smoking? Set a plan number one sit down look at your habit when you smoke why you smoke um, and and start charting first and then sit down and say okay I'm going to do the patch 
that's fine for addressing my my um, nicotine and then you have to do something with your hands uh, you know the patch what whatever nicotine replacement um, but um, I always recommend taking straws and cutting them in half so that you have piece of straw in between your finger at first it makes a mm -hmm. big difference it really does but you have to have a plan before you get started Okay. and you were telling me when we talked before that a lot of people use smoking as uh, an excuse to take a break or kind of yeah yeah I, I love your idea of having a plan I think that's so important although with each person as you say each person is different so you don't know what of the three things that you're going to be dealing with is going to sit down in your chair at, at you know and how you're going to help that person find their way out um, I'm sorry ask me your question again um, just about how you said that people use taking a break oh yeah when I was would one of the one of the ways that I deal with people is that that I try to find out what cigarettes mean to them you know what is it that they feel like that they're going to be giving up if they quit smoking and then what are the benefits for quitting smoking so you can kind of get those things going in their subconscious mind and I found far and away what people would say is it let me take a break it let me change hats um, and so that be I, I, I began over the years I began to realize that that was that was one of the major things that that if I could give them that in the hypnosis a way of taking a break which once you isolate it it's pretty easy mm -hmm. um, give yourself permission to take a break <laughs> and you know and then that helps them a lot okay and uh, Pamela what do you think are some methods if there are any that aren't effective I think any method can be effective if the person is ready for it um, and and the, that's the method they choose um, you know I taught a class uh, American lung based class um, and, and like I said, my class was eight weeks long, and, and the people that chose that path, uh, about 25 to 30 percent were successful one year later, still, from giving up cigarettes. Um, you know, any road, whatever works. Whatever works for you. And uh, why do you think that some methods work better than others? Well, I think you, I think you have to look at what person is each method is working for if you've got someone who is not a particularly addictive person perhaps just giving them a way to get over the physical cravings to wean themselves off that'll be fine for those people but for the people who are um, being driven by habits you know habits are habits save us time habits save us energy they're calming in and of themselves these rituals that we do so you're suddenly asking someone to give up something that they rely on to calm themselves down anyway. And, and if anybody doesn't think it's uncomfortable changing a habit, try wearing your watch, on the other hand, for a couple of days. And that will teach you immediately what it's like to change a habit. So, um, so it depends on who we're working with, but I really feel that you have to deal with, for most people, you have to deal with all three things. You have to deal with the physical, you have to deal with the habit and the associations, and you have to deal with the comforting, the self-nurturing. And is quitting smoking affected by your sex or your age, anything like that? No, I haven't found that to be so, not at all. So the only reason maybe that it would be harder for someone to quit smoking is if they've been a smoker longer or? I don't even know if that has, um, what seems to be, the, what seems to make the big difference is when someone is just really sick of smoking, when they were really, the weight, you know, the weight of smoking against the weight of quitting, it has to tip enough for the person to say, okay, I'm willing to withstand the discomfort. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. 